So let's carry on now and <coughs> talk about public key encryption systems. So basically, in, in the conventional encryption system, we said the two parties, there are two individuals or entities want to communicate. They take the message, the plain text message, we refer to it with P, into an algorithm using a key, and that produces the cipher text. So the cipher message is sent right through, through the internet, through the public area, where it's not secure. At the end, the other end, we receive it, we use almost the same algorithm in reverse, or a reversing algorithm. We use the same key, and that will produce the plain text message again. And this is how the conventional encryption systems work. But they call them also the symmetrical systems. Symmetrical because on either side, they share the same key. And the success of this system depends, or the, the strength of this system, or the security, depends on the range we take the key from. We can make it even stronger by increasing the range, increasing the complexity of the algorithm changing keys frequently, deleting and destroying those keys, the old keys, not to throw them away, and exercise security in the way we store them. Obviously, the problem here is that every other entity we need to communicate with, we must meet face-to-face -face in a confidential environment and exchange the key. We must satisfy ourselves with their and identity. So if you want to communicate securely with the bank using this system, you must physically go to the bank. You must have a, you know, some form of ID. Once they're satisfied of your <coughs> identity, then they might give you the key. Right, so we'll, we'll, this obviously is a good system, but it's useless on the internet because we want to communicate with thousands of people, hundreds, maybe even millions, we want to communicate securely. They are far, they are remote areas. We can't meet them all. So, <clears throat> back in the 70s, somebody came up with a better idea and they said, okay, well, let's have a different system. This doesn't work. And they came up with this idea of actually having two keys. So every individual has, produces two keys. This is known as the public key encryption system. The idea in the public key encryption system is that you generate two keys. Everybody generates a pair of keys. That's a pair of numbers. It's a mathematical kind of system. But the idea in those is that these numbers, or those two keys, are, there is a relationship between them, a very strong relationship. If one performs an operation, whatever it is, it cannot be reversed except by the other key, not even by the same key. So that's, that's the major advantage in those keys. And the other good point about those two keys, so they have characteristics. These are the two characteristics, the most important ones. The two of them are related in such a way that if one performs an operation, it can only be undone by the other key. No other key in the world, not even the same key that did the operation. Like, you have two keys. One locks and can't open. Only the other one can open. What else? If the other key locks, if the second key is used to lock, it cannot un unlock the key. We must use the other key to unlock. That's the, that's the relationship between those two keys. And the other relationship is that if you know one of the keys, it's not easily, you can't find out what the other key is. So the fact that if we produce two numbers that work together, it doesn't matter once you see the first one, you can't really deduce the second one. You can't find out what the second one is. So this is, these two characteristics are very important. It has, been, it has not been proven that you can't find out what the other key is. It's just assumed. No solution has been found. So if you know one of the keys, if you can find out a formula or something that can produce the other key, then the, the entire system really falls apart. It has not been proven that it cannot be found. So maybe somebody will come in the future and find that magic formula that will discover what the second key is. 
Now, I'll give you an example of how it works. It's not exactly the way it does, but imagine. Again, we, we take characters, we look at their numerical value, so we only deal with numbers here. So imagine it also has an algorithm, and now we have two keys, but we'll use one of the keys. And imagine if the key <clears throat> happens to be the number six, just for the time being. This is the key, key equals six. And maybe the data we want to send is the number five, or the character five. And the algorithm just says multiply the key times the character. So which is six times five. And that's what we produce is 30. So if we want to encrypt number five, could be character A, B, or C, it doesn't matter. Just some character, but we look at its mathematical or, no, or numerical value. So now, and the algorithm is just a multiplication between the key and the character. And let's say we did, we multiplied five, which is the character times the key, and that produces the number 30, and we send it to the receiver. So nobody knows what this 30 means, but hopefully the receiver will do. Now in this encryption, it's not a reverse operation, it's exactly the same <coughs> algorithm in the decryption. So also, the algorithm here will be k times the, whatever, the ciphered text. I'll just replace character here for p, which is just to indicate that this is the plain character instead of c. Let's use c for the ciphered character. So now we produced a ciphered character. Let's say it's 30 and we sent it over. So now there's the key receives the new ciphered character. So that's the ciphered character. Our key is still the same, key equals no, we don't know what the key is in this case because we are using two different keys. And hopefully, we should produce the number five here again, back. Oh, where's the key? So this is the plain message coming in, and hopefully we should produce the same plain message. We feed in a key here, we feed in a key, and the operation should be the same. Multiply the key into the ciphertext. Here we multiply the key into the plain text. So what is the number that you multiply it into 30 should give us 5? Anybody knows? Six. 1 over 6. So easy to look at this one because if you multiply something to 6, you get 30. Now if we multiply 1 over 6 times 30, we should have 5. So the, the key here is 1 over 6. And the key here is 6. As you can see, there is, a, there is a relationship between those two keys. If this does an operation, this will undo it <clears throat> using the same algorithm. But here, of course, it's so easy. So if the key is 5, then our, the other key should be 1 over 5. It's easy. You can actually work out what the other key is. But with public key encryption system, this is just a simple idea that gives the idea of how public key encryption system works. So public key encryption system uses two keys except for those two keys. They're similar to those, except once you look at one of them, it's very difficult to find what the other one is. And the key is so large, it actually is close to 2,000 bits, the number. So the number, imagine 2,000 bits, any number that from zero to the maximum number you can write in there, it's a big range and you pick one number of those and that's the key. And if you multiply it into this one, there's only the only way to bring it back is by using the other twin key, if we may call them. Okay, so this is the basic idea. So, the idea is that we use, we take those pair of keys, we, we keep one of them private, that's why they call this the private key, and they make the other one public. It's published. We tell everybody, hey, here's my key. So how does this work? If you know my key, my public key, and I'm keeping my other private key secret. Anything that you encrypt using my public key can never be decrypted by anybody, not even by my public key that you have. Once you encrypt it once, there's nobody else can decrypt it except me because I have that private key. So this is the basic idea of public key encryption system. I create, and the other good thing about those two keys, they are easily produced, you know, takes less than a second in a computer to produce a pair of keys. If you don't like them, produce another one, another pair. So they're easily produced, 
I can keep one of them private, and it's my responsibility to keep my key private, and I make the other one public. It's easy to, do, to distribute a public key. I don't have to go to South America or Australia to tell somebody, here's my public key. It's publicly known, but I can send it. You know, it doesn't have to be kept confidential. So it's easier, a lot easier to distribute. It's like a phone number. We can have a directory, and there are directories of public keys, just like telephone directories. You can pick somebody's public key and encrypt a message. And no one else, not even you, if you encrypt a message using my public key, you cannot decrypt that message back again. The only one that can decrypt it is my private key. Okay, do you understand the idea? Simple. And it reduces this problem of we, two of us, have to share a key. Now I can communicate securely with my enemy. I don't have to trust the other party. If I want to send them a message securely, then all I need is somebody's public key. And encrypt that message and send it to them. That's how public key encryption system works. Now, <clears throat> I have two keys. So everybody here, just going to say, that's me, A, or someone else, B. <coughs> e has two keys. So everybody has two keys. A public key and a private key. And you have two keys, a public key and a private key. Now, if I want to send you a message, let me ask you. If I want to send you a message, you have two keys and I have two keys. Which key will I use to encrypt it in such a way that no one else can read it? And remember, if no one else can read it, that means it's confidential. Only you can read it. Which key? Public key. Yes. My public key? Yeah. If I, what happens if I encrypt a message using my public key? What do you think should happen? What will happen to a message? Who can read that message? If I take a message and I encrypt it using my public key, my public key, Anybody who has my public key can decrypt it? No, hold on. If I encrypt a message using my public key, I can only decrypt it using my private key. So who else could decrypt that message? No one else. If I take the files from my computer and I want no one else in the world to read them, all I have to do is encrypt them with my public key. So no one else can read them. That's how many companies will encrypt their files on their systems. So even if you manage to get through into the computer, the company, and pick their files, they'd be encrypted. You will need that private key that they have. Would every company have its own private key? Or they have yeah. Every company, they, they, they'll have at least one, one private, one pair of keys. They might have more, obviously. Right, okay. If I encrypt a message using my private key. Remember, I have two keys. Remember the basic idea. Everybody has two keys. If you encrypt a message using one of them, only the other one can decrypt it. If you encrypt a message using the other or second key, only the first key can decrypt it. Nothing else, no other key in the world can do it. Now, supposing I take a message and I encrypt it using my private key. And I send it out to you. Who can read that message? I, the message is encrypted using my private key. Who could decrypt that message and read it? Anybody who has my public key, right? Because remember, if you encrypt a message with any private key, with my private key, only the public key can decrypt it. Is that clear? You sure? Right. If I take a message and I send it to you, I encrypt that message using my private key. Will you be able to read that message? if you have my public key. Who should have my public key? It's a public, it's everybody has it. So what good is that? What good will it be if I take a message and I encrypt it using my private key and send it to you? Sure, everybody can get a copy of that ciphered message. Everybody has my public key because it's public. They can read the message. So there's no confidentiality there. But guess what? If you can decrypt a message using my private key, then it must have been encrypted using my public, or vice versa, sorry. If, if you can decrypt a message using any key, that means it must have been encrypted with the other key. So if, that, if you can decrypt a message using my public key, it must have been encrypted using my private key. 
There's no other key in the world can encrypt it such a way that you can decrypt it with my public key. So if you send me a message, you send me a message using your private key, right? We all got that message. We can all read it because we can all decrypt it using your public key. But we are satisfied that you encrypted that message and sent it. And that's how it's authenticated. That's how we know this message could have only come from you, from no one else. So you have those two keys. They undo what one of them does. So if this one encrypts a message, only this one can decrypt it. If you can decrypt a message using this key, then it must have been encrypted using its twin key. And that's where the authenticity comes in. That's, why, that's where we can be certain this message came from you and from no one else. Okay, so if you ever encrypt a message using your private key, it will have no confidentiality. Everybody can read it. But the point in it is that we can be certain it came from you. Okay, so this is, this is using this basic idea of that a message encrypted using one key can never be decrypted except by its other pair, paired key or twin key. And if you can actually manage to decrypt it using one of the keys, then it, must have, it could have only been encrypted using the, the twin key. And that's where we get into the authenticity or confidentiality. So, start again, another question. I want you to send a message to Tom over there, confidential message. What would you use? Who, who's going to hear Tom? How would you send a message to Tom over there? No one else in the world can read it except Tom, using this public key encryption system. Anybody? You would encrypt it with your public key. With Tom's public key. So get Tom's public key, encrypt that message. No one else in the world can read it except Tom, because Tom hopefully is the only one who has that private key. And that guarantees confidentiality. Now, I want to send a message to Mary over there. But when you send it, it doesn't have to be confidential. But <clears throat> we want Mary to be happy that it came, that message could have come. Couldn't have come from anybody except you. You were the sender of that message. What would you use? You'd use your private key and send the message to Mary. OK, so that's, <clears throat> that's a simple idea. Now, public key encryption system works perfect, works well. It's just as secure as the conventional encryption system. And it does actually provide authenticity as well as confidentiality. We can either use it to provide confidentiality or authenticity. And we can actually now use it to do both. So if you want confidential and yet authentic document, so you have to encrypt the message twice. 